Okay. What do you got to do to get those people on the phone? All right. He said that we could call him and then he'd call us back on the number I gave him. Do you want to call him? Uh, call who? Scott Chrysler. Oh. He's the DCP. He gave me the number. I didn't know if you want to just give him a call time to call us on that number. He, I gave it to him yesterday, but if he needs you it again, I'll write it down. On the phone hearings or in First time we've done this one this way. Which is usually they they will sit here and argue pretty good, but uh, it shouldn't it, take long. They're afraid to hurt. <laughs> <No. laughs> Most of us guys are. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> hey, Scott, this Not is much time investment on their part, is it? Not in this hey, case. Uh, now, we have had back some knockdown dragouts uh, some years ago. You yesterday. They just want to push us to see if we're going to go need through it. with it. They wait to the last day and either withdraw or, you know, See if we're yes, be here, so. Okay. Hot up. <coughs> and now I'm gonna call Jerry and get him on the picture. Okay. <coughs> so Scott Chris is from Denver. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Not up. We're waiting on Scott. He's called Scott. He's supposed to call us back when I set a number. So I'll do some later phone down here. Put you on speaker so you can listen. All right. Okay. That's a big guy. Hello. Please leave a message. Pass through the phone. Hello. You can call me back. I got it on vibrate. I'll see if you can't go back on speaker. Okay. Hang on. Just a minute. I'm going to put you on speaker. All right. I'll put you on speaker. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, we're ready to call the meeting to order. Um, this is a meeting of the Equalization Board, June 8th, 2016. Uh, do a roll call. Chris Olson here. Bob Seaver here. Bob Seaver here. So we have a quorum at the Equalization Board. Uh, so. <coughs> go around the table and uh, everybody identify themselves and also the one on the other end of the phone, uh, Shelly Reed. Shelly Reed, Woods County Clerk. Lynn Martin, the newspaper in Alba. Brian Mitchell with the DA's office. Drive us off a task. Renetta Benson, Woods County Assessor. <coughs> and Jerry Wisdom with task on the phone. Okay. And uh, this is Scott Chrysler with TCP Ministry. Okay, first name? Scott. Scott. Scott, okay. Yes. All right. Okay, uh, we're here to uh, discuss the uh, uh, DC midstream. Um, I'll first, uh, I guess, direct this to Renetta and let you tell us what we got here. Um, DCP is protesting their values, and we use TASC. It's Total Assessment Solutions Corporation as our consultant with the oil and gas, and I'm going to let Travis deal with this today. So. Okay, Travis, can you tell us what we've got today? <clears throat> uh, he's Scott, and the way DCP is just protesting the value that we've placed on the oil and gas property for top lines, compressors, and uh, within the county that he disagrees with. So. Scott, if you want to go first like normal, that's fine. If you want to go ahead and present what you got. Yeah, uh, certainly. That'd be fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, Scott Chrysler with DCP Midstream. I'm, I'm the tax manager here at uh, DCP, uh, representing the LLC and all of its affiliates. Uh, basically, DCP uh, this year would certainly like to reach a settlement with all of the counties in Oklahoma. Uh, whereby we pay our fair share of taxes calculated using a fair valuation as outlined by the Oklahoma Tax Commission. Uh, as I understand the standards as defined by the OTC, this state that property taxes are, are based on value of the property. Uh, 
uh, further stated, they say all tangible property must be taxed on its current market value. This market value as defined by the OTC is the price for which property would sell when both buyer and seller want the best price and neither one is under pressure to buy or sell. The settled value of property therefore should not represent the cost or, or net book value alone but the fair market value. So in preparing our uh, 2016 values this year for all the DCP assets, including those in Woods County, we've calculated a fair market value based on an approach including income and cost as the basis for what we've rendered for 2016. Our cost approach again this year has been impacted by economic obsolescence at a higher figure than what we used in the prior year. Economic obsolescence is a form of depreciation where the loss or value of usefulness of a property is caused by factors external to that property. These external factors can include uh, the economics of the industry, including pricing, uh, which is what we experienced in, in 2015, uh, new legislation, availability of financing, uh, reduced demand, uh, to name a few. Our income approach reflects a negative net operating income of $820 million, so an $820 million loss, uh, which we've actually replaced with a three-year average Net, net operating income of positive $292 million, which actually increases the overall value we've attributed, attributed to the income approach. Uh, the reason we utilize the income approach is twofold. Uh, one is to comply with the state standards of calculating a fair market value, and the second is based on the integrated system that exists in the mid-continent region, where assets like those located in Woods County would have a reduced value without the processing plants and other infrastructure uh, which, which are located in other counties. DCP has met with multiple appraisal companies in the state of Texas where DCP has the same type of assets as in Oklahoma and those in Woods County. By using the same valuation approach as we are in Oklahoma, the appraisers recognize the challenges in the industry and in light of that have reached agreement with DCP in over 90% of the counties being represented at a significant reduction to the prior year's value. So to put some context uh, around DCP's assets, the market challenges, results specific to DCP midstream, uh, the mid-continent region and the central Oklahoma asset area that includes the Woods County assets, uh, here's some, uh, basically some points of reference. Uh, in, in Woods County, we we own approximately 250 miles of various diameter pipe, average in-service date of uh, 1991, so it's approximately 25 years old. Uh, there's various meters, boosters. Uh, we did add uh, about six miles of pipeline in 2015, which shows them on the 2016 rendition. Basically, uh, as I noted earlier, the audited financial statements of uh, DCP midstream reflect a $820 million operating net operating loss. That's a 210% reduction year over year and, and about $1.6 billion. We forecasted 2016 to break even as of Q1 of 2016. Uh, the mid-continent region, which, which includes primarily Oklahoma, but sections of uh, southern Kansas and northern Texas, reported a uh, EBITDA loss of, I'm sorry, an EBITDA reduction of 192 million or down 69% year over year. And at a lower level, the central Oklahoma asset area, which includes the Woods County assets, uh, was reduced 61 million or 75% year over year. Commodity pricing is certainly reduced uh, from 2014 through 2015, uh, an average of 60 to 70% on average and production volumes in the Midcon region uh, are down 14% year over year and forecasted to decrease another 9% in 2016 as of Q1. Central Oklahoma's volumes are down 19% uh, year over year and forecasted to be down another 11% uh, in, in 2016, again as of Q1-16 reporting. Other factors we kind of looked at in valuing or coming up with our valuations are rig counts. Uh, Central Oklahoma was down 74 or 58% year over year. Looking at our capital spend, uh, we basically, in the Central Oklahoma region, were down uh, only 5 million year over year, but it equated to 74% year over year. 
much of that capital <coughs> spend is on product replacement and maintenance capital and, and not on uh, growth and expansion. The effect of the economics in our industry right now uh, have actually reduced our headcount by six to 700 people since the beginning of 2015. Uh, that includes corporate jobs, field, and field or operational uh, jobs at plants and, and so forth. Uh, my tax group, for instance, has gone from 10 people down to four people uh, since that time. Our Tulsa office, in, uh, in, uh, the, by the end of June, will have closed. Uh, we've reported an asset impairment uh, in the 2015 financials of, of just over 300 million. Goodwill impairment was uh, written down uh, or impaired by just under 500 million with an additional intangibles impairment of just over 100 million. Other projects and <coughs> uh, were not being viable uh, had been written off and that uh, was another uh, 28 million. During uh, 2015 and certainly uh, during the course of 2016 so far, we've looked at various plants and operations uh, we've determined there's several plants that will be shut down by the end of this month, and there's an ongoing effort to look at uh, decommissioning additional plants, uh, idling boosters, and abandoning pipeline across our footprint. Surplus equipment is being sold for scrap, uh, basically pennies on the dollar, and if we can find uh, buyers who are willing to pay at uh, current uh, multiples of, of reduced earnings, uh, that we're looking at uh, selling certain gathering systems or assets uh, in non-producing non areas. So basically, based on those facts, uh, the fair market value of these, these assets has decreased significantly. We believe the assessor's value of approximately $16.4 million exceeds the actual fair market value of the subject property, and the assessor's value fails to accurately measure all forms of depreciation under cost approach, including but not limited to economic obsolescence, and fails to reflect the decline in value as measured by the income approach. In summary, based on a fair market value as stated by the OTC, the market supports a significant reduction in value for these assets. As buyers base purchase price offers on multiples of earnings or cash flow and not book value, the settled value of property should not represent a net book value of the property, but the fair market value. For these reasons I've discussed, DCP would like the board to consider DCP's valuation. Uh, that concludes my remarks, and uh, once again, I thank you for your time today. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask you a few questions there on your comments. <clears throat> now, you are... Um, you're in the business of transporting gas. You own, you own the pipeline. Is that is that correct here in Woods County? That's correct. Okay. Uh, and in so doing, do you uh, charge uh, transportation cost for the use of your pipeline? I'm sorry. I, uh, I think I've lost you. Do you have uh, transportation cost uh, plugged into your profit stream for uh, your pipeline? associated with transport, correct? Okay, have you decreased the transportation cost to the uh, owner of the gas? I did. Well, I can't speak to each contract as it applies to the assets in Woods County, so I, I guess that would be a, com a commercial representative question because there's thousands of contracts out there, so I, I don't know what they do with all of them. Okay, so you don't know whether you've uh, reduced your transportation cost to the producer or, or not then. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, Bob, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Um, well, thank you for your uh, input here. So now I'll turn the uh, conversation over to uh, Travis of TAC. Scott was saying, you know, this is 
he talked about they own property in Texas and how they do stuff there in Colorado. And, you know, they do stuff a little different. Just we're dealing with Oklahoma, so let's mainly focus on that. But if you open up your handout, the the, the first sheet in there is, is the is what is for 2015. It's the our evaluation, which was 16092037 It's on page three of the exhibit. It's highlighted there. That's what the property is valued in 2015. If you go to page 9 of 13, I'll jump you around there a little bit. The uh, highlighted there is 16382120 That's what we valued this year. Our schedule has decreased due to the downturn of the market. You know, taking into consideration, it has decreased a little over 1% this year. Next year, it's, in my opinion, it'll probably go down again, even if the market has already started to turn around and come back mm -hmm. to some point. I mean, I've seen a rig moving through town as I was driving in this morning. Even though it comes back towards the end of the year, it's still going to be the year, probably the year after before our schedule will come back up, so to say. That's my opinion, but... Uh, the value went from 16, 1690, to 16382120. And due to the increase, we took last year's value that, that DCP settled on. And all we did was the new pipe that they added for this year for 15, and they had one compressor moved in from another county. We took the fair market value off of those new items and added to last year's settlement factor is how we come up with this value for this year. So if you go back to page number five, <coughs> highlighted there, I'll read this. It says, in January 2015, we entered into a purchase and sales agreement with Mustang Gas Products, LLC, to select our, to sell our approximate 44% interest in the Dover Hennessy gas plant and gathering system for approximately 29 million. Subject to com customary purchase price adjustments, this transaction closed on January 30th, 2015, and we recognize a $10 million gain on the sale in the condensed consolidated statement of operations for the three months ending March 31st, 2015. So what we have done if you turn the page, our, our schedule is based on cost. Well, we, we did a sales ratio comparison comparison off a DCP sale of that Dover Hennessy gas plant to our cost schedule. And that's what this top deal represents on page six. Yeah, that's it right there. Well, when you do a comparison on your ratio, you have a ratio, you, you can be a range from a 90 to 110 percent is where your value, valuation can fall in. You're, that's the range that you can be within a percentage. But when we compared our cost schedule to the, the sales data off of their own sale, our cost schedule come in at 99.13 percent, which is right in the middle. And then the, the next thing there at the bottom of the page that's just a kind of another comparison you can look at it's a marshall swift utility pipe for 30 year life uh, that's the low schedule page seven that's uh this is their informal sheet where they're that highlight that four million two ninety nine nine fifty two ninety that's what they're saying that dcp is saying that it's worth this year and there's a Page eight, page nine is the 2016's rendition. It has our value. If you go to page 11, this is uh, off of their consolidated financial statements. <clears throat> it's highlighted there December 31st, 2015. There's a, that line that's highlighted that property, plant, and equipment. Their net worth was nine mil, a billion. 428 million those numbers are in millions so if you flip on back to the very last page he well actually hang on I skipped the page sorry about that on that very same page page 11 
Okay, let me ask you there on page 11 now. In 214, it was uh, 9,537, and it's decreased to 9,428 mm -hmm. in, in a current year. Okay. Right. Go ahead. We've, uh, it's, it's, all, it's all out of here where it's, I'll read this. It says, uh, we evaluate whether the carrying value of property plant equipment has been impaired when we believe events or changes in circumstances indicate that we may not be able to recover the carrying value of those assets. It was determined during the fourth quarter of 2015 that the carrying amount of certain property plant equipment was not recoverable. We determined that the carrying value of these assets were less than the fair cash value and recognized property plant equipment non-cash impairments of 302 million, which are included in asset impairments in the consolidated statement of operations for the year ending to uh, December 31st, 2015. Now we can go to page 13, and that it's highlighted right there in the middle. Year ending 2013, there's his goodwill impairments that he was talking that Scott was mentioning, his intangibles, other assets. This is where he had it all listed out. Well, right there, highlighted property, plant, and equipment. There's the 302 million. Well, if you take that 302 million and divide it into that 9 billion 428 million. That's a 3.2% loss for the year. That's what they're telling their shareholders or their owners that they've lost for the year is 3.2%. Well, if you take, doing the same math, if you take DCP's value from last year, which was a 16,092,037, and what they say that is valued at this year, and do the math, it comes out to a point two six two uh, two six seven two, or a seventy three point two eight percent loss in value. So they tell their told this year they told their shareholders they lost three point two percent, but when it comes to the schools, to the county assessors, and to the board, they're saying they lost seventy three point two eight percent. You've lost that much. How are you still in business? This is kind of our point. I mean, and why are you telling your shareholders you lost X amount when you're telling us that it's only worth this amount? So, even if you do, that was taking our, our value from what they said it was. If you do the exact same math from what DCP's value was, what they said it was for this year, or, you know, the 4.299 million, do the same math for what they say it was worth in 2015, which was 12 million something, that's still a 65.63% loss off their own numbers. That's, that's our point, is how can you have that big of a loss and still be in business, and why are you telling your shareholders and owners you have only lost X amount when you're telling us you lost this amount? So, our, I'm asking the board for a motion to uphold our values off the information we give you from one of their very own sales compared to our cost schedule and how we have this value with the downturn of the market our schedule has dropped from 15 to 16 I, I, I'm, I'm asking the board to motion to uphold our value set for 2016 okay uh, Scott, have you got any uh, uh, comments in regard to Travis's assessment here? Uh, yeah, certainly I do. Uh, well, first of all, in reference to, I, I mean, I certainly brought it up in, in our discussion with the appraisers down in Texas. My intent was not to compare uh, the process, nor the laws, nor any of that. It was to simply uh, indicate and uh, uh, I guess communicate that we go through this same process uh, pretty much everywhere and it's to basically indicate that there are certain appraisers uh, that we've already discussed and that recognize the challenges of the industry and realize that a, a one, one to two to three or five percent reduction to the market isn't realistic. Uh, the market decreased a significant amount more than that. And so I just wanted to indicate that we had had those discussions in another state and used the same exact methodology that I'm presenting here, and that was the result. Uh, in reference to uh, the 
Mustang gas transaction within our financial statements. Uh, the one thing the board should realize is that, uh, again, that's in our uh, 2015 financial statements. We closed the sale as of January 2015. In reference to pricing, when a transaction like that comes together, uh, you start talking about it well in advance. Uh, per, per discussion with some operations folks that were involved in the sale, that transaction started in late Q3 and was uh, finalized in Q4 of uh, uh, 2014. Commodity pricing was uh, entirely different at that point than what it was at the end of the year 2015. Uh, gas at a minimum had decreased uh, 49%. NGL pricing uh, decreased a minimum of 23%. So pricing was, was quite a bit different there. Uh, and as far as the buyer was concerned, uh, we were in the we were in a transact. I'm sorry, in, a, in an agreement with them, uh, a joint venture that basically the joint venture was very inefficient. Uh, the buyer wanted to consolidate their operations, and the plant was actually uh, experiencing quite a bit of deferred repair. And so, in order to get out of the transaction and accomplish. Uh, their motivation, they basically uh, bought the bought our interest, the 44% interest, at a premium. Uh, along with that, there was uh, I don't uh, know the details, and I don't know that the details are necessarily public. But there was uh, a gathering agreement on the uh, as part of the deal, and I know that created uh, additional premium built into the sale. So I think in order to uh, look at the uh, transaction with Mustang Gas, uh, just within the context of the financial statements, probably isn't uh, alluding to all the details behind it. And I don't know that. It, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know that it's a uh, a reasonable comp to go on. Uh, one other point to make on the uh, three percent reduction that Travis had calculated in response to, uh, or I guess in communication to our owners. And again, to maybe clarify. Uh, Midstream is a, a private company. It's owned uh, by two public companies, and so there there is no shareholders. It strictly is just owners. The three percent, uh, I don't dispute. It's a reduction in the PP&E value as a result of the impairment. But when we communicate to the owners, and when we set the valuation to each of our counties, that valuation, based on again, as I mentioned, it's based on cost. It's based on income. Uh, what we communicate to the owners is not just a, a result of the impairment, but you look at uh, our net operating loss of $1.6 billion, economic obsolescence that goes into our calculation, uh, a 53% per reduction in revenues year over year, uh, as shown on the financials uh, as of 2015. So the owners are very aware and supportive of the reduction that we're proposing in this and every county uh, and, and all others, uh, you know, in order to stay in business. So I think when you look at our set of assets uh, today as compared to a year ago, they had to have reduced, been reduced in value because those assets aren't generating the same revenues that they were just one year ago. Um, I, I believe that that's all I had in response to Travis's presentation. Thank you. But I understand, let me ask you a question here, that you are lumping uh, Texas and Oklahoma as a whole in the uh, uh, calculations that you've made. What about just Woods County? What's your volume uh, based in Woods County? Uh, has it decreased, increased, or what's, uh, what's been your volume here? I, we're interested in your production, your, uh, your analysis based on Woods County, not, uh, not over your entire business. Sure, I, under I understand. Uh, and actually, the way that we report our internal numbers, I cannot boil that down to just specifically Woods County. I can get as close as what we call our Central Oklahoma asset area, which includes Woods County. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, that's down 19% and forecast to be down another 11% this year. Okay. Uh, I, have a, I have a couple of comments for the board, if you don't mind. Okay, is this Jerry? Yes, it's Jerry. I, I, and specifically on the, 
the sale of last year uh, and what we're talking about. That sale was actual in a central Oklahoma sale. It looked like it was Garfield, Major, uh, King Fisher. Uh, it was in the midstream assets. It's part of the Mustang gas processing, and they've held it for several years. And the scenario is that the same type of assets that we're talking about here. Last year, uh, when we agreed to the $16 million, they were saying they had all of this obsolescence as well last year, and then we brought forth the sale. But there's two ways to measure obsolescence. One is the gross income method, or find out how much an income loss you made, and the other one is paired sales. So when you have a paired sale, you compare the cost of the schedule, like Travis explained to you, and it measures whether there's any obsolescence. If our value, if our cost schedule would have come in over the sales price, that would have recognized other obsolescence. So when he says we haven't recognized any obsolescence from the cost approach, that's incorrect. If the sales price came in under, we're either too low on our reproduction cost news or the depreciation isn't correct. We came in at 99.13%. So that proves in our cost schedule. Also, he says that, that in that sale that I had gathering agreements and other, and other things, and basically I think he was implying that there was intangible values in that number. And looking at their financial statements, they booked no goodwill or no intangible value in the first quarter of last year. So I found no goodwill that went to this sale. And they also reported a $10 million gain on the asset, which would just include the depreciation. So, and they also, he said, keep saying this thing, this is a private held company by two other companies. The two other companies are publicly traded companies. So in their financial statements, they report what this other company is doing. So it is a publicly traded company. It's just not DCT midstream uh, LLC. But uh, whenever they want you to value that in the total income approach or the unit approach, they want you to consider all that but then they want to say that it's not. So you can't have it both ways. If you're going to tell your shareholders you lost 3%, then it, we could be an impairment in the mid continent region. We would want to know where that loss. And I think Chris alluded to that first. You asked what the volumes of Woods County. We all know that the volumes of Woods County has gone up tremendously, and they added pipelines the last year. So what is the throughput from this system? We would want to value the income of the system inside Woods County. They want to say it's part of an integrated system and you can't value it. That's totally false. If I wanted to buy the system, I'd do that. They bought it from A&R way back when. They bought some other ones from Duke that make this company. Also, they have renegotiated all of their contracts or tried to renegotiate and raise minimum requirements to all of these oil and gas companies. Uh, I've served on the board of directors of a small independent and we've seen all of our rates go way through with BCP and as well as minimum volumes required. So what is the income you know, from that sale? So uh, whenever they rate that income, we're talking about Woods County. Uh, I really don't care less of how the profitability of West Texas and East Texas is doing when we're talking about value of a pipeline system in Woods County. So our value basically we kept the same as last year as they agreed to and we just merely added the new property. That's the difference in the 290,000. So, but I think Travis covered everything else very well. Uh, and But I wanted to point out that I'm very knowledgeable on this particular sale and asset agreement that we had. We have asked for maps from Scott uh, and some beater uh, maps for them. There could be some idle pipeline that we could make some adjustments to on factors. Uh, for them, and hopefully, if they provide those maps, that will assist us in reducing some of that value. We recognize when a pipe's been idle for two years or less that it's lost about half its value, or we take it to a 10% floor. So, hopefully, Scott gets us those maps and the, and the meters uh, information that we can make those adjustments. Okay, uh, Scott, were you able to uh, hear that? Uh, for the for the most part, I understand what what Jerry was saying. Yeah. Okay, what uh, I get from what he was saying is if there is some idle pipeline uh, that is not being used, that they could consider 
uh, reducing that value, but the pipe that was added suggests that uh, uh, you have increased volume. Um, ha can you get the assessor the uh, pipeline that has been idled and is now in uh, uh, basically uh, uh, for storage and so forth? Uh, can, can you get that to us? Uh, and we can go from there, or uh, is that too much trouble? No, that's, uh, nope, that's, uh, that's actually already in process uh, based on discussion with another county. Okay. Well, I'm going to recommend then to the board that uh, we wait on those things being given to our assessor before we, and we'll just table this till we can uh, uh, make assessment if there is any idle pipeline that's included in this uh, evaluation. And I will second that. Okay, we got a motion to, that is made to... How many days are we talking about? Okay. Do we have a, is there a time limit? Uh, how long is it going to take you to get this to us, to the assessor? The amount of the idle pipelines? I. You know, I, I've got to defer to my GIS group. Uh, it's in process, but there's uh, there's quite a few counties, so uh, I'm kind of at their mercy. We just submitted the request late last week, so we're trying to understand their timing uh, in, in, in relation to other projects they've got going on. We have a meeting on the 22nd? Have, yes. Our next meeting is scheduled for the 22nd of this month. We, we'll need that for the 22nd of this month. Uh, and the other deal, the in major county, they asked, give the map within 10 days no, that way it would give us plenty of time and, and like scott uh, scott did re refer back to me and said it was in the process so you know if we can have that you know within the 10 days because we're going to have to go through each line and what we do is we verify that that well was shut in abandoned and that there's no other line so he's going to send us our, his metering maps uh and his pipeline maps and then we'll be able to make adjustments uh, to that valuation. So as long as I've got it within time for me to review that, uh, that, that will certainly uh, be our uh, wish that we can have that number recorded back to the assessors uh, or back to this board by the 22nd. But we're going to need it probably by the, you know, this, today's the 8th or the 7th, so we're going to need it by the, you know, within 10 days. Okay, is that uh, satisfactory with you, uh, Scott, to have it within 10 days so that we can review it and uh, go from there? Uh, let, me, let me clarify the, the dates. You're, you're saying the 22nd is when the assessor will review it, but you want it 10 days in advance of that? Uh, we need it within 10 days of today, which would be the 18th, and that gives us a chance to... Uh, and everybody to evaluate it uh, before the 22nd meeting. Okay. Uh, if, they, if they would just, if they would just, if the board would just have them send the electronic maps to us, the board would have not have the ability to read the electronic files without a program. So what I can do is, as long as he's got it to me within the 10 days, and, and we ask that from all the other counties, so really it's, it's already been in the works for about four or five days, but. I would just say as long as he's got within 10 days, then I can work up the idle pipeline. It's going to take two or three days for us to go through and, and to verify that. And it is a very time, busy time of the year. So if I could just have it by the 18th, uh, that would be great. And he sent an electronic form like we've asked for on the meters, uh, you know, and the pipeline, we can accomplish this uh, adjustment. Okay. Uh, is that... Good, good with you. Okay, that will give us uh, the ability to table this and make a decision on it uh, then on uh, June the 22nd. I have a, a motion to table this in a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion made and seconded. So uh, we will go from there and look forward to this on the 22nd uh, to make a decision. Any other questions, comments here? <coughs> All right, well, Travis, we appreciate your uh, input on this, and uh, we will we look forward to finishing this on the 22nd. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> Bye, Scott. Hi, right, thank you.
Okay, is that all we have today? The other one was withdrawn, so we don't have anything else we can adjourn. Okay. Then do I hear a motion to I'll make adjourn? a motion we adjourn. And this will be tabled today. Motion made. I'll take it down.